Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. I am the Scent Maven. Welcome back to my channel, Shopping in Scents, for another video. And of course, this is going to be not scent related or shopping related because the, the channel doesn't all have to be about that. We can talk about different things. If you hear uh, snoring in the background, that's my pug Malcolm. He's always there making noises. Maybe he will come over and make an appearance, but right now he's crawled up in his bed. So I did a movie review last time uh, I was I did a video and I'm going to do another movie review not that I'm a studier or student of film uh, or a expert movie critic but I am looking to talk to you guys what did I just do there I am looking to talk to you guys about different topics and relevant topics and you know different things I was going to do a video on the whole area 51 uh, storming Area 51 Facebook page ridiculousness. Um, maybe that'll be for a future video. Maybe I will post that. Maybe I'll do two videos. I don't know. Uh, so this video is going to be, I don't think that long. Um, I'm doing a movie review of a film called The Founder. And it was released in 2016 and it stars Michael Keaton. And it tells the story of Ray Kroc, who is the quote unquote founder of McDonald's. I feel like I have a hair on me. It's because I do. Um, so why would I be reviewing a film from 2016 right now? Well, I just recently rewatched it. Um, I was on a biopic uh, kick. So I had watched the um, a Mr. Rogers documentary and there's a Tom Hanks film coming out um, that is a, a kind of biopic on Mr. Rogers. And then going with the Tom Hanks theme, I watched Saving Mr. Banks, where uh, Tom Hanks plays Walt Disney. And so uh, it came up in my Netflix uh, related videos feed, um, The Founder. And I was like, oh, I haven't watched that in a while. And I, I watched it when it first came out, not in the movie theater, but I think I watched it. Did I watch it on Netflix? I'm not sure. I think I did. Um, and I really liked it. And I saw a little notification on Netflix that it is going to be um, expired or uh, not on there anymore uh, as of August 2nd, I believe. So you still have time to watch The Founder. So I figured this would be kind of timely in that way to catch The Founder on Netflix if you haven't seen it already before it's uh, removed. I'm not sure why they do that, why they rotate videos. You know, it's very rare, going on Netflix thing, it's, it's very rare that I want to watch a movie and then look for it on Netflix and have it be there. I was very surprised when I wanted to watch Saving Mr. Banks um, that it was actually on Netflix. I don't know, just had a, a run of bad luck, I guess. So anyway, The Founder. So it's an excellent movie uh, and starring an excellent actor, Michael Keaton, who we know from... Batman and Beetlejuice and a whole bunch of different movies, some good, some bad. How many people remember Multiplicity? Do you guys remember that? That starred Michael Keaton, I think, too. So the founder <clears throat> talks about a man named Ray Kroc, who was a milkshake, um, not a milkshake salesman. He sold multi-mixers, which were these contraptions that made multiple milkshakes. And how many people are singing the Khalees song in their mind? My, mix, my milkshake brings all the boys to the air. No, that's really awful. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So, yeah, he was a multi-mixer salesman. And he would sell these multi-mixers to these restaurants. And he'd travel all over the country uh, trying to sell these machines. And he'd be lucky if he could sell one to a restaurant. And he wasn't really doing too well. Um, and one day, he checks in to his office uh, by phone as he's on the road uh, and he and the uh, secretary gives him his messages that snoring is gonna drive me crazy Malcolm hey so and he's doing it again can you be silent it's like me talking to this invisible person so the secretary tells him that there is an order for six multi mixers and he can't imagine any one restaurant needing to make 30 milkshakes uh, in an hour. And now I'm thinking of that line from There Will Be Blood, where he's like, "You, 
I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. <laughs> Why are all these terrible, terrible milkshake lines coming into my mind? Okay, so I have to, Malcolm, excuse me for a moment. Shut up. Okay, this is going to be the worst movie review ever. I'm going to get so many thumbs downs on this. So he, he turns out that it's, he calls the, the restaurant and it's not a mistake. They did indeed order uh, six of these machines. And then they said, no, you know what? You better make it eight. And they, they were like really busy and they hung up on him. So he looks for the restaurant and he finds it. It's in, it's called McDonald's and it's run by these two brothers, Dick and Mac McDonald. And it's in San Bernardino. So he follows route 66 uh, which I could do a bunch of Route 66 songs here. He follows Route 66 uh, from Missouri, where he was, to um, San Bernardino. And he meets the McDonald's brothers. He goes to this restaurant and it's different. It's totally different than any other restaurant he's ever been in or been to um, that serves quote unquote fast food. Because at that time in the 1950s, drive-ins were all the rage you would pull up your car and I'm not a child of the 1950s, obviously. Oh, but don't look I am, like I am. Um, but that's before my time. But in the 1950s, uh, you'd go to the, the drive, not drive-in. Yeah, you go in the drive. No, that's a movie theater. Yeah, the drive-in. And you park your car and uh, not a bellhop, whatever they call those people, hops or something, will come over to your car and they would bring you your food. I'm staring at Malcolm because he's driving me nuts. I will be back. Okay. He wants to make noise. Oh. Let him make noise. So these waitresses would bring you your food to your car. They put a tray on your window and on your car window and it would have plates and utensils, which I can't imagine anybody doing that in this day and age, bringing you like a, a place setting to your car. Half the time they get the order wrong. They, uh, you know, there were a lot of bad things about drive drive-ins right Malcolm there were a lot of bad things about drive-ins but the one thing they didn't have to deal with is pug noises and boogers so McDonald's changed all that they made a restaurant where you could get your food fast through an automated system. They only carried three items, or I'm showing four, three basic items. Hamburgers, french fries, and soda, and I guess milkshakes. So hamburgers, french fries, and beverages. They narrowed the menu down to that those three things because those are the three things they found out through their previous ventures that they had. They had a previous hot dog stand and restaurant and different things. And they realized that most of their money came from those three items. Why don't we just make this the Malcolm video? Why, mama? Why? I'm sorry if you came here for an actual movie review and instead are being subjected to pug madness. I should probably reshoot this whole video, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna eat my hair clip. So they narrowed down the menu to three basic items. And because they did that, they were able to produce the item super fast. Uh, they had different like uh, stations in the restaurant set up so that it went like a, a ballet. It went like clockwork. One station for hamburgers, one station for the dressing the buns with uh, 
that sounds dirty, with ketchup and mustard, one pickles, and then, so each, so it was like a, it was like a production line, just like Henry Ford had done uh, with cars. So they came up with this ingenious, speedy system. And Ray Kroc, when he went there to um, to see what was going on, why this restaurant was ordering six multi-mixers and how they were producing so much and, and doing, you know, so much business, was uh, mesmerized by this speedy system and what the McDonald brothers had done. And he thought it was revolutionary and he wanted to be a part of it. So he told them um, that they should franchise. They should make McDonald's a franchise. And he was dead set on it and he was determined and he was going to convince them. And they said to him, oh, by the way, there's spoiler alert. You know, you may not even want to watch the movie after this because I may tell you the whole thing. But basically, uh, they told him we already tried to franchise and they couldn't do it. Uh, they had a couple of locations, but they felt like they couldn't keep tabs on quality control, uh, that the, the product had um, become, you know, like they, they opened a one location and, and the place was selling tacos or burritos or something. And they had no control over the quality of the product. So they scrapped the idea of, of the franchise. Uh, but Ray Kroc said that he could, he could do it. So Mac McDonald... Uh, and Dick McDonald, they were wary. Uh, and eventually they, they, they said, this is our dream, you know, to have our business go across the country. And so they gave in, they signed a contract with Ray Kroc and Ray Kroc was just like this head of, um, getting people to sign up for franchises. That's what he did. So he went all over the country and he was really excited about this idea. He really believed in it. He thought it was so great. Um, and he started to sell franchises and he had the same problem. Uh, he sold franchises to his friends. He sold franchises to people who may ne not necessarily have been qualified to be in the restaurant business. And he found that the quality went down and he was very disappointed. So, he came up with another idea. He came up with the idea that McDonald's should be about family. So he started selling franchises to uh, husbands and wives and, and people who were more family oriented, that were more into the, the concept or the vision that he had for McDonald's. And he started to achieve success. But he was uh, bound by this contract with a McDonald's the McDonald's brothers as far as any kinds of changes. So anytime he wanted to make a change that he thought would improve the business um, or he asked for more money or any kind of, of change that he wanted to do, the McDonald brothers basically told him no. So he was very frustrated by this. He was expanding the franchises at a rapid rate and yet he was basically broke and he couldn't understand why he couldn't get banks to lend him more money he had to mortgage his house and it just didn't seem to add up one day he meets a man who tells him you're you don't know the business that you're in you should not be uh, in the franchise business, you should be in the real estate business. You should own the land that the burger is cooked on. So, uh, where, whereas previously, the way the franchise um, business would work with, with Ray Kroc, the way they described it, is that he would find a, a person who was interested in opening a restaurant. They would uh, lease the land from whoever. They picked a location. They leased the land with a 20-year lease and they would open the restaurant. This gentleman, I forget what his name is in the movie or in real life, uh, told him that he should start buying up the land and leasing it to the franchisees. And that's how he would make his money. So he started uh, a corporation, a, a company, that was separate and apart from the McDonald's company. And it, I think it was called Franchise Realty. And that's how he started to make his money. And he wanted to make more changes. And the McDonald brothers were furious. And he said to them, well, you know, this is a business separate and apart from McDonald's. You only control from the roof to the ground, 
floor to the door. Everything else around that, the property that it's on and all that, that's under Ray's control. And so one of the things that he wanted to implement that he actually eventually did is uh, powdered milkshakes. <laughs> Going back to the whole milkshake theme. Um, there was an enormous cost associated with uh, refrigeration and electricity when it came to preserving milk and dairy products, ice cream, for making the milkshakes. So he found, or rather an associate found, a company that made powdered milkshakes. And this, he thought, tasted just like the real thing and he wanted to implement it across the country and the McDonald brothers were not having it. He was like, milkshakes should have milk in them now and forever. And it was a whole big thing. It was a whole big fight with them. Eventually, um, you know what? I shouldn't tell you what happens. Uh, but at this point, I mean, it's not like I'm giving away the ending because if you know the story of McDonald's, then you already know what happens. Uh, it's like if you watch a biopic about Lincoln, you know, if I tell you he gets shot, you're not going to be surprised because mm, it's supposed to be based on a true story. So he buys them out. He wants to buy the McDonald's brothers out and eventually he does. He buys them out for, I believe it's $2.7 million dollars. Uh, with taxes taken out, it comes out to a million dollars per McDonald brother. And he he bought the McDonald's name. And he started the McDonald's Corporation. Now, they say in the movie that uh, Ray Kroc told them, because they wanted a royalty. They wanted like a 1% royalty or half a percent royalty on all future earnings of McDonald's. And McDonald's is a billion dollar corporation now. So that would be around $100 million today. Or no, every year. Um, I've watched interviews with the real McDonald family and stuff. So he said, well, I can't put, I'm not going to put it in the contract that you're going to get this. Um, not residual. What do they call it? I just said, and I forgot. Um, a royalty. I can't put it in the contract that you're going to get this royalty, but I'll shake your hand on it. It'll be, you know, handshake deal. And that's what they did. And the McDonald brothers never saw a cent from that after that. That he paid them off and they never saw a cent of royalties from that point. The interviews that I saw with the, one of the grandchildren of the McDonald brothers uh, said that they weren't bitter over it and that, um, you know, that the McDonald brothers had worked with Ray Kroc for quite a while before it went sour. So it's kind of sad in a way, the movie. So here are my, my wrap up thoughts on it. In the beginning, you really feel for Michael Keaton and Ray Kroc, who he plays in the movie. He's trying hard to be a good salesman. He's trying hard to make a living, but he's just not successful. Then he meets the McDonald brothers and you really think that it's going to be a win-win for both of them. The McDonald brothers have come up with this great idea. Ray Kroc has got this enormous passion for their idea and he's going to spread it across the country. And so you think things are going to work out well. Then slowly, uh, as money tends to do and ambition tends to do, uh, Ray Kroc, it seems like uh, he cares more about his success than his original idea of, you know, helping these brothers out and, and bringing this great company to the, the nation. And so he sort of turns into a bad guy in a way. But then you have to think to yourself, yes, the McDonald brothers came up with a great idea. But one of the things that they don't tell you in the movie that I've watched and other, you know, reviews and stuff is that the movie makes it seem as though the McDonald brothers invented the fast food industry when there were other chains that had been out like White Castle that came out in, I think, 1919 
that had come up with the idea sooner, they just hadn't been as successful. So the McDonald's brothers, they, they pioneered, like I said, along with some others like White Castle and I forget what other restaurants, this idea of um, a assembly line way of preparing food that would make it fast. They also got rid of all the utensils and cutlery and made all paper packaging, disposable packaging that you could just throw out. How good is that for the environment? I don't know. Um, and what else did they do? Oh, and they, they came up with this idea of this core menu with just the three items and just building upon that. So where was I? So yeah, you feel bad because you think in, at the end, the McDonald brothers got screwed and Ray Kroc is going around with business cards calling himself the founder of McDonald's and basically wiping out the true history of where the idea came from. So you kind of, you feel bad for them because they didn't get the recognition that they deserve. Now in the movie, people know or will know and they, they get the recognition they deserve. But then also you think to yourself, would McDonald's be the billion dollar corporation that it is today, if it had not been for the drive and the incentive and the gumption of Ray Kroc spreading the word around the country. Because like they said in the movie previously, the McDonald brothers had tried franchising. They had tried spreading their idea and it failed. And meanwhile, Ray Kroc got it to work. Now, I think the way it would have turned out better. I, well, who's to say? Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? I think that Ray Kroc should have gotten all the recognition that he did for the work that he did, right? But he should not have erased the McDonald brothers from the history of McDonald's and taken all the credit. I think that was wrong. I think he still could have been successful. I think he still could have gotten all the money that he did and been this great, you know, entrepreneur and still give the McDonald brothers credit. I think he should have, if he wanted to take the idea and be able to make changes and come up with different ideas and not have to go through the red tape of consulting with the McDonald brothers, yes, he should have bought them out. Okay, he bought them out, he should have given them a royalty because it was their idea. I think it would have worked out better that way. They would have got the credit they deserved. They would have been paid for their idea. They would have gotten a small, what would have been a fraction of a percentage of what the the McDonald's empire is. Now I had read somewhere that, that after Ray Kroc died, that uh, his wife gave a lot of money to charity. So, I mean, why not have, well, I mean, he was already deceased at that point. So who, who knows what he would have said about his wife giving all, uh, not all of his money, but a lot of his money to charity. But I mean, they, they should have given the, the McDonald brothers their due. So I think in a way too, it parallels a little bit off of a modern day. We can see this in the modern day with another great movie that you guys should check out, which is called The Social Network. Uh, which is about Mark Zuckerberg and the founding of Facebook and how there were, depending on who you listen to, there were these two brothers at Harvard that went to Harvard with Mark Zuckerberg. They were very rich, the, the Winklevoss twins. They were champion rowers and, and great students at Harvard. And they came up with this idea for a website called the Harvard Connection, and they changed it since that later to connect you. And the whole idea was that you would have, um, you had to have a harvard.edu address to, to join. They went to Mark Zuckerberg with the idea. And then the whole movie talks about how he basically, according to them, allegedly stole the idea and turned it into Facebook and became a billionaire. So yeah, I think we have, we've seen this before and they went through a court case with the Winklevoss twins and, you know, he ended up having to pay just like Ray Kroc had to pay. Not as much though. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too is in the social network, they talk about how, I don't know if they signed a confidentiality agreement, but they allude to 
uh, Zuckerberg, the, 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 the lawyers telling Zuckerberg that he should have them sign a confidentiality agreement so that they can't say anything negative about him. Um, I don't think such an agreement was signed by the McDonald brothers with Ray Kroc, but according to the family, when I watched in interviews, they, they didn't talk about Ray Kroc a whole bunch. Uh, so, I mean, they could have gone out there and smeared him, but then again, he had the money to defend himself. So that is my review of The Founder. Go check it out before they take it off of Netflix on August 2nd. I know this was kind of a crazy all over the place review, and I know I'm not the greatest reviewer, probably one of the worst, but thank you for watching my channel. And I'll come back with some other crazy video. Maybe we will talk about Area 51. How many people want to talk about Area 51 and whether people are going to go there on September 20th to storm Area 51? I looked at the website, the Facebook page today, and it has 1.9 million people signed up as saying that they were going to go, and 1.4 million have said they were interested. So just a little tidbit here at the end. If you guys are not familiar with this, somebody in Las Vegas, I believe, started a Facebook uh, page advocating for storming uh, the military base known as Area 51, saying that they can't stop all of us. So with the idea being that they raid the military base and they find aliens there and it's a, and that they prove that the government has been hiding aliens and doing these tests and complete ridiculousness and completely unsafe and unnecessary. And, you know, there are signs there that you, that advocate trespassers will be shot on site. Do you really, I mean, it's so, oh, we really need to talk about that a little more. So I think I will make that another video, okay? So comment, rate, subscribe, hit that little gray bell and uh, be notified of all my videos until next time. Goodbye everyone out there in YouTube land.